welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Ailey and today's video is going to be another instalment of my beginner series. Today what we're going to do is we're going to pull it right back to how to find your skin type, your skin undertone and how to match your foundation. So yeah, if you want to see how to do all those things then just keep watching. So first of all, don't mind my red face because I've just literally thrown on some moisturiser. First of all, what we're going to do is talk about skin type. Now, skin type is a little bit of a tricky one. Anybody I ever ask when I'm in the salon or if I'm doing any sort of makeup, they don't generally know what their skin type is. The basics of it are, if you have this is why we're starting with a completely clean face today. You can find out your skin type by basically after washing your face, drying your face. If you leave it for a little while and then just kind of feel your face. I know that sounds really weird, but as a beauty therapist, we're trained to be able to detect what people's skin types are. Now, skin types generally fall in dry, combination and oily. That's the kind of three main ones. You do then have dehydrated and you can have mature skin, young teenage skin, acneic skin, the list goes on. But generally, when you're breaking down beauty products, it is dry, combination, oily, mature and acneic. So basically what you want to do is you want to find out the basic skin type that you have because more often than not skin care products will be geared towards a certain skin type now if you have dry skin and you're using a product that's meant for oily skin it's not going to do your skin any favors same with foundation foundation that's geared towards oily skin isn't necessarily going to work for dry skin now that is not set in stone you can make it work generally a matte foundation is better for oily skin types but dry people can use them too case in point the dior forever foundation this is one of my favorite foundations and it is a more matte finish and it's got shine control so it's generally geared towards people with oilier skin but i i find this foundation beautiful and it does have a little bit of a luminous finish so there is a little bit of wiggle room and it does really take a long time to get used to and that's why I always say testers are the best, will be your best friend. If you've washed your face, you've let your skin sit for a little while, basically just, and I've put moisturiser on just now because I know that I'm going to need it by the time I get to the foundation part of this video, but don't put any moisturiser on your skin. Just leave it and then have a sort of feel around your skin. Now obviously acne and breakouts and things like that are very obvious. You'll either have bumps, you'll have whiteheads, you'll have blackheads, things like that. So what you need to be looking at is does your face appear shiny? If it appears shiny and it feels oily to the touch, sometimes it takes a little while for the oils to come out, but generally if it is shiny and it feels oily and it feels plump, combination skin is a little bit more tricky because obviously you've got to kind of deal with both problems. And then if you've got combination skin with like acne or anything like that, you have to then cover that up. That can be a little bit of a pain. And then there's dry. Dry skin, probably just because I have it, is a total nightmare. Dry skin, the problem with it is if you put something like a powder or a foundation on, it can look very dry and very cakey and very flaky very quickly. So that's where I find the problem is, but you can combat that with really good moisturizers and stuff. So if you have sort of really dry and flaky looking skin, it's very quickly apparent that you have dry skin. If you generally do get a little bit shiny in your T-zone area, and you're sort of dry everywhere else, you're definitely combination. If your face is shiny and you do feel sort of like plump and oily, then your face is oily or your skin is oily even. If you are in your 30s and 40s, generally your skin should be drier. Generally your skin gets drier as you get older because your, your skin isn't producing enough oils. So if you have dry skin, you need to Focus more on foundations that are geared towards dry skin. So dewy foundations, satin foundations. Like I said, you can make a matte foundation work for you. And I do have a video on that, which I'll link up in the top corner for you, which is how to prep dry skin for foundation, for perfect foundation application. It has got some really good tips and tricks in it that I use all the time if I'm going to use especially this foundation. But it works for every foundation, so you know you can really make it look nice. 
Then obviously if you have oily skin you really want, you don't want a dewy foundation. Now you can combat that by using a shine control primer, a shine control powder, things like that. But if you go for more matte foundations it does actually help the longevity of your foundation. Now you can add the shine and things like that back into your skin or your complexion with highlighters and things like that so you know you don't have to walk about with a fully matte face. So before this video ends up a million years long that is your basics. If there's anything else you want to ask me about skin type, about skin care, I'll maybe do a designated video on skin care for different skin types. I think it's really difficult to recommend skincare products because you have to have tried everything and you really have to try it all in different skin types. So it is quite difficult to then recommend products to people. But what I might do is I might compile a little bit of research into the best ingredients to look for for your skin type. So if you want to see that, give this video a thumbs up and I'll try and do that in the next couple of weeks just basically to give a little bit of information on how to look after your skin type. But for foundation, now I can't stress enough the the benefits of trying out foundation. Testing out foundation, you can get testers from a lot of places right now and that's the best thing to do for you because you, you, you could end up wasting a lot of money trying to find a foundation that works for you. Believe me, I have a lot. <laughs> so we'll move on now and basically we'll go on to your undertones. So your undertones fall in different categories. What we're going to focus on is peach, yellow, pink, you know, things like that. So if you're looking at me right now, I have a slightly yellow undertone. So it's very neutral. Now, people think that when they have redness in their face, it means that they have a pink undertone, which is generally cool. So that isn't always accurate if you know what I mean like my face has calmed down now but when I rubbed it it did go very pink so but if I put a pink foundation on my skin it looks very very pink if I put a yellow based foundation on my skin it actually does look like my skin it doesn't look a really weird color but if I was to go for more of a golden foundation it looks really orange on me what happens is if you put the wrong undertone on your skin it can pull really weird colors on you and that's why you find that like contour colors and bronzers and things like that can show up really orange on one person and then it can show up really neutral on another person this one is so so tricky generally what you need to do is it's the same as matching the foundation shade so what to do is when you're in a place like Sephora or Boots or Superdrug or you know any kind of place that will let you actually test out the products, what to do is do exactly the same as what I'm going to show you with finding your foundation shade but look for the one that blends into your skin the best because they'll all be different and they'll all cater to different skin tones. A really good thing to look at would be Revolution Pro. Now Revolution Pro, I've got it up on my phone just now if you're wondering why I'm looking down. They have their new foundations and concealers ranked in different shades and they have different undertones. So there is sort of like a wide spectrum but the best way, there's no point in looking at your face and thinking, hmm, yeah I'm a such and such. You know it doesn't really work that way. You really need to see it especially with the foundation because their pink undertone may be different from somebody else's pink undertone. So the best thing I would say is test them out. Test them out on your jawline because generally we don't match our foundation to our face. Now our skin tone is going to be the same throughout our whole body or usually anyway, I don't really want to say for definite. So the tone is going to be the same from here to here but the colour may be different. As you can see right now, I am fake tanned. If you fake tan, whole nother ball game. So I am fake tan just now so I'm going to be different than I'm used to. So I'm going to show you a few different foundation shades and show you them on my face. I don't think I have an exact match just now but we'll have a wee look and we'll see what we can do. You can probably see there that that is, it isn't actually as bad as I thought it would be. It is a little bit light you can see but the, the tone of it matches perfectly because if I was to blend this part of my face is quite pale for some reason if I was to blend it in, it almost disappears into my skin. But as you can see, all of these foundations have a reasonably similar tone, but this one's the closest in shade for me right now. So you can see, too fair, too fair, 
that one is pretty close in shade far too fair and then this one as you can see it's sort of settling in now and if I was to blend out the edges just a little bit it sort of just disappears into my skin so that is how you would find your foundation shade and undertone when I started wearing sort of a yellowy it's sort of a combination of yellow and peach undertone that my foundation just started looking 10 times better so we're going to use the naked skin foundation because it is the closest match to me right now if you have oily skin combination skin normal skin I actually didn't mention that before you can have normal skin which is just pretty much normal it's quite rare if you have it I hate you <laughs> but you can pretty much get away with anything with no normal skin because it's just normal it is how everybody wants their skin to be and as you can see looking at that there's no big line, no big streak or anything like that. You can see that it just, for this, because I bought this on holiday and I had a tan, it actually suits me really well. Because obviously I bought it towards the end of my holiday and I had my tan and I colour matched it and I didn't think that, you know, when I get home that it wouldn't actually match my skin tone. I would say for dry skin in general, the less product you can use, better. Because there's less to sort of cake up, there's less to crease, there's less to grab onto dry patches and things like that. So the less you can get away with, the better. I like kind of a reasonable coverage foundation, just a light coverage of it, and then I'll go in and I'll add concealer where I need it. So yeah, that is pretty much it, I think. Once you have a full face of foundation on, you'll be able to see via, you know, from your face to your neck, does it match? You can see if you've got your undertone right. It isn't always, totally completely obvious what undertone and that that you are it's just all about trial and error so if you buy a foundation and it's not quite right don't feel so bad because sometimes it's not really really obvious that it's the wrong undertone for you I mean I wore the wrong undertone for years and years and years and didn't even notice so it is all about experimenting trying out different products trying out because you could be a warm undertone or a pink undertone or a beige undertone with one company and you could be a completely different undertone with another company because there is no standardized undertone throughout the makeup industry there really should be but there isn't so really it is all about trial and error so i'm gonna finish up the rest of my makeup and then i'll be right back Okay, so that is the rest of my makeup completed. Um, as you can see, the foundation that I'm wearing kind of blends seamlessly into my skin, blends seamlessly down my neck. I'm actually quite surprised considering I obviously picked it up when I was on holiday and didn't really know exactly what shade I would be when I was home and it just so happens that my fake tan shade actually matches me when I'm properly tanned so that's a nice relief um, but that is pretty much it if you manage to nail down your skin type and your skin tone and like your undertone and that it will make life so much easier for you especially when you're ordering online because it is easier to look at the undertones if it lists it and discover what shade it's going to be closest to you. Let's face it, nobody ever gets it bang on, but you know, it makes life a little bit easier for you. So have a little practice and see how you get on. And remember, it doesn't matter if it's not exact. It doesn't matter if, you know, it's, it's makeup at the end of the day, but I hope that these tips help anyway. So I think that is pretty much all that I have to say on the topic. So I really hope that this video was helpful. As I said, if you want to know anything else or you're struggling with anything else, shoot me a comment in the comment section below and I'll try my best to help you. But apart from that, Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I do post videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday so hopefully I will see you in the next one and don't forget to go and check out the rest of my beginner series. I'll leave them all linked in the description box for you.